I've been using my Laplet Binder DIY version for about a year now, and I really like the form factor of it. It's slightly bulky, but with that, the protection it provides my Galaxy S4 tablet is worth it. Recently, I saw the release of Apple's new iPad Pro tablet with a very well-designed stand and keyboard combo called the Smart Keyboard Folio. The stand looked very impressive and got me thinking, can I build something like this? Well, I'm going to find out. I'm going to video all the steps I go through in an attempt to mimic the design of Apple's new iPad Pro stand. The design of the stand is very simple, which is why I feel it's genius, but it wouldn't be worth copying unless I was going to make it better. And I will. To see how I do this, stay tuned. My first try at a design will be made from corrugated cardboard. In this phase, I'm trying to get the approximate measurements for a stand that will work with most 10 inch or smaller tablets. I've cut out a roughly sized prototype to see where the different folds should be. I also want to get an idea of the combined thickness of an average keyboard and tablet. I also want to test a mock up of my docking mechanism, which will be one of my stand's unique features. The cutout holes in the stand are the docking connectors for the keyboard and tablet. Both the keyboard and the tablet will have coinciding discs glued to them that will snap right into those cutout holes. There are two cutouts on the tablet side of the stand versus only one on the keyboard side. When the tablet is in use, it's placed in the outer edge cutout. This cutout gives the tablet more room to rotate depending on the desired tablet orientation. When the stand is collapsed for storage is when the tablet uses the other cutout. In looking at the sizing and functionality of this stand, if I can actually build this, I think it would be my ideal tablet stand. This mock-up is really making me anxious to move ahead, so with that, let's get started on my new tablet stand. The docking connector is a simple disc on the tablet or keyboard that will snap into a hole in the stand. I have no final design for this yet, but I'm thinking this will probably be a magnetic connection. What I'm going to test here is gluing the magnet to the back of an old tablet, then see if the magnet is enough to hold the tablet in place on the mock stand with minimal jostling. One caution you should be aware of is I'm not sure what attaching a magnet will do to a computer, but it may just depend on where the magnet is placed. Test this before gluing the magnet in place permanently, especially apps like Google Maps that use the built-in compass. I'll draw intersecting lines between the tablet corners to find its center. Where the lines intersect is where the magnet is glued. I'll let it sit to dry for 24 hours since there will be a lot of stresses put on the magnet during testing. For testing purposes, I'm going to tape a piece of sheet metal to the back of the mock stand to give the magnet something to attach to. When I do this to the final version of the stand, it will have something a lot nicer looking. The magnet seems to hold well and a round magnet allows the tablet to rotate smoothly. I'm planning on the panels for the stand to be aluminum, but while I'm testing, I'm going to use these quarter inch sheets of wood for its ease of cutting and they are scraps that I happen to already have. At the same time I'm testing the construction of the case using wooden panels, I've gone ahead and ordered these 12 inch by 12 inch by 1 8 inch thick aluminum sheets to be used on the final version of the stand. Along with the aluminum panels, I also ordered three versions of torque hinges, one of which I hope will be the one I use for the final version of the stand. For testing though, I'm going to use this typical door hinge that I'll modify with a nut and bolt that I'll tighten as needed to compress the hinge, making it tougher to swing freely, creating exactly the kind of hinge that I need. I'm going to combine everything to make my second prototype. This one should be a lot closer to what my final version of the stand will be like. Some unknowns this prototype will help me figure out are 
testing the strength of the magnet I'm using to see if I need a stronger one or not. What it'll feel like using the same test tablet along with the actual keyboard. And finally, a long session should give me a good feel for the ergonomics of this setup. And this is the prototype number 2 stand. Although this is not a visually identical rendition of what the final version of my stand will look like, it is functionally accurate. I do have the magnets that hold the tablet and keyboard working. There are two magnets for the keyboard so it won't move around as you type. As demonstrated in prototype number 1, the tablet can slide in and out of the upper mount and is positioned high enough to provide a comfortable viewing angle. One of my favorite features that I'm looking forward to using is the ability to rotate the tablet between portrait and landscape without affecting the keyboard or mouse. This is one of a tablet's greatest strengths but I've yet to see a stand that handles this well while working. One of the toughest problems to solve for a DIY stand of this type is the use of hinges that are able to hold their position even with weight applied. As you saw earlier in the video, to solve this, I substituted the normal pin that holds the hinge together with a nut and bolt. The ability to adjust the stiffness of the hinge's swivel made it possible to dial in the exact amount of tension needed to hold up the weight of my tablet. In the final version of the stand, I'm hoping the torque hinges I ordered off of Amazon will work similarly to these prototype ones, but I'll see how that goes. And this is the stand in its collapsed protective case configuration. Keep in mind what I said earlier. This prototype is functionally accurate in how I'd like all the features to work, but visually this is nothing like what I want. This prototype is quite huge and I'm gunning for something a lot thinner and streamlined than this in the final version. These are the main parts I've come up with to make the final version of this stand. The function of the parts are the same as in prototype number 2, with the quality of the material or product being improved to a more final version level. Also, there will be some design changes based on my time using prototype number 2, which I'll go over next. I picked up some neodymium magnets to replace the ceramic ones used initially in prototype number 2. I kinda knew I would need stronger magnets, but after the test tablet fell off the stand a few times, I decided a stronger magnet is a must. The bottom panel that holds the keyboard can be maybe 3 quarters of an inch shorter in depth. I'm trying to make this stand as light and streamlined as possible, and there's plenty of unnecessary material on the bottom panel of prototype number 2. The same is true for the mid panel, which can also be about 3 quarters of an inch shorter. If you remember, this prototype number 2 had two holes to hold the tablet. I realized I don't need two holes, so I'm changing the design to maybe this single slot, or maybe one bigger circle that's easier to find when mounting the tablet. I'm adding a semicircle cutout on the upper panel to provide more finger space to hold on to the tablet while it's being mounted. One thing that'll help with rotating the tablet between portrait and landscape are rubber stoppers to keep the tablet in landscape or portrait position. It's a simple idea, but it's hard to explain, so I'll wait till the stand is done so I can show it to you. As I was about to begin work on the final version of the stand, I noticed one issue. Earlier in this video, I mentioned I didn't know how magnets would affect the tablet and to be careful where you mount them. Well, for my tablet, the stylus that comes with the Galaxy Tab S4 is affected by a strong magnet. An approximately 2 inch area near the center of the tablet, exactly where the magnet is mounted on the back of the tablet, 
will not accept stylus input. Keep in mind that the Samsung stylus works different from the snub point stylus with the soft rubber tip. The soft rubber type are called capacitive styluses and those still work. It's just the Samsung one that doesn't work, but I prefer the Samsung one over the capacitive one. I've been doing some research on magnetic shields and it's a pretty interesting subject. I haven't found anything yet, but there are some products I want to try. For now, I'll continue with this video and hopefully show you my findings for a shield at the end of this video. Here's a highlights clip of the entire process of constructing the final version of my case made from sheets of aluminum. If you have any questions about a specific step or steps within this process, leave them in the comments section below. I'm done with the major construction of the stand and just have some minor details that are not showstoppers but I would like to take care of them in the future. The easier of the two things I need is a gap filler and protective layer to go between the stand and both the tablet and keyboard. As a gap filler, I need an additional 1 32nd of an inch. I originally thought of using wood veneer sheet for this but after some testing, I think I'll hold off on using anything and leave the tiny gap as is, for now. The second item was not as easy to come by. I've still not found a usable magnetic shield for the magnet mounted behind the tablet. I've spent about two months with the wooden prototype and I've been able to work around the Samsung stylus issues. I'd like to fix this at some point, but it's not a debilitating issue. And now it's time for the grand tour. For those using a physical keyboard with your tablet or would like to use one, this is an ideal setup. It unfolds nicely into a stand with an adjustable height and viewing angle. The tablet mounts using a single neodymium magnet glued to its back. I found this to be more than enough for holding my particular tablet to the stand. If you remember, my prototype number 2 had two ceramic magnets holding the keyboard in place. In the final version, I decided to use a single neodymium. Less glue up, less holes to drill, and the holding strength is a lot better. And finally, the part of this stand that makes it all work, the hinges. 
I have two types because I initially wanted just the smaller stainless steel ones, but because I needed adjustability, that meant also using the larger black ones. The stainless hinges have a fixed swivel tension and there's no adjustment. To add more tension, I had to add another hinge. This swivel needs to be stiff because this is the hinge that is holding up the weight of the tablet. It also needs to be stiff to prevent movement while adjusting the viewing angle handled by the other hinge. The black plastic hinges are the adjustable ones. A single screw tightens the hinge around the pin to create more or less friction. This is necessary because the amount of friction needed depends on the weight of your tablet, as well as the amount of wear and tear the hinges have gone through. Both sets of hinges together work to create a unique experience for my tablet stand. Its adjustability and stability are good reasons for it to replace my laplet binder. I hope this video can either help you with your current Android tablet or maybe even get you to start using your old or new one. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.